Excellent. Okay, so we're back, and we're going to first of all switch over to the server for SK for now. I can see if that's even close to going live yet. Uh, right now, we have all five Fnatic players on the server. No one from SK, but I mean, they might as well might just be playing CSDM or AMAPs together. So I assume this match should be starting pretty quick, considering how long it's been delayed. But uh, I was going to say earlier, uh, Tommy, that, uh, and Thorn, that I, I kind of like the changes that Navi made with their setups, moving Edward to B, because I feel like their B was a little bit weak with just leaving Zeus there, and now they have kind of a a fragger to take that uh, role to kind of put more pressure, not let people get free entry. And now with Zeus playing Halls, I mean, they still have Starks lane, and he's obviously a really good fragger. They can do more flash setups, which I don't think they did as much before with having two people that kind of wanted to both use their aim more. As, as you could see in, in that match, Zeus was just holding flashes out for Starks all the time uh, in Big Pit and kind of baiting them up into, into him. I actually like that change too, because even when, let's say, Navi starts having problems with their CT side against another team and they have to overstack four people playing the A side, in that case, normally, they would have either Sania or Zeus playing B alone, but now, even even when they play 4A, they're still going to have one of the most one of the top five most skilled individual players in the world playing that side. So obviously, at least on paper, he's more likely to get multi-kills on CT trying to get an entry on the side. So, Semphis, what do you think is the biggest reason ESC fell apart so much in the T side? It, it, I don't know if you guys agree, but it honestly looked like they gave up at some point. Like, it seemed like at the very start, they were kind of, they kind of did some weird rush type strats and some, and tried to get some picks, but after they lost a couple of rounds, it just seemed like people were just walking up, not even trying to wait for their teammates or anything, and they just were trying to make like Superman plays. I think that's something that easily happens when you're playing with sort of like a pug when you have a ringer, who is not maybe doesn't even understand the language perfectly. I think that can easily happen because if the shot caller gets a little frustrated, he might just try to start doing things like too much by himself. And we saw Pronex die early a couple times. And especially as a pug, I feel like that's even even worse for the caller to die out early because then who's gonna who's gonna lead the troops in that three v three or four v four to win that close round? It seemed like there were a few times where they wanted to attack A and they tried to do a wrap, but they went really slowly just walking, and then they lost the guy for like no reason each time at the library. When since that wasn't working early on, they'd probably have been better just holding and only peeking if they wanted to like draw the AWPA for one second so they could the other guy could come out of balcony and plant. But they never had any kind of coordination in that sense. It was just like two groups of people doing whatever they wanted. Yeah, I also feel like they really should have tried to buy that second round. Well, we already made that point, but I really think that could have made a difference. Because they, they kept force, having to force buy pretty much, because after they lost that third round that they bought, they pretty much had to buy every round just to like try to bring the game back. But they were simply just not going to win. They just weren't going to beat Navi's solid setups and Markelov's op especially without smoking him off and flashing him off. And we saw how many times ESC was basically forced to just walk up the lane. And like how are you going to walk up lane when Markelov's even holding that still from library? I just don't see that happening. Yeah, and then they basically got themselves into a money, like a really bad money position where they had not enough money for a full buy ever and Navi had, I think on like the sixth round, they had two people with one death. That means they both probably have around like 10,000 money saved up, if not more. Yeah. And, and yeah, I definitely agree. I, I think they should have, should have forced that second round. I mean, we saw that Markloff had a USP, so that round was definitely winnable for them. And I think that means in the 
that in the lower bracket today that ESC will have to play the winner of Existence versus Isahara and the game will be on Nuke. And uh, Isahara already beat Moscow 5 on Nuke, so a lot of if ESC, if ESC was to go out that early, that would be like a very unexpected result in terms of their overall ranking, I'm pretty sure. Because that would put you out in, um, let me see. Fifth through sixth? Yeah, fifth through sixth. Are they actually already playing through the lower bracket? On the results sites, it doesn't seem like they have really. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if they've played the Delta Low Lions and the Death no, Spain like, game yet. Looks like Delta Lowland Lions is starting in five minutes according to AngelTV.org. And the Pain Defining Stars game is scheduled for four, uh, to start in 40 minutes. So this is going to be another very late night. I was still actually hoping to go out for a beer, but I guess I can scrap those plans. Thank you, Game Goon. You know, you know what, Duncan? Remember last year when we complained where we missed out on the consolation final because they started like an hour or two early? Okay. Yeah. Which bracket? Which game was that? The one where Fnatic beat Navi on Nuke? No, FX beat Navi on Nuke. Uh, they definitely didn't. Seeing as how Fnatic came from the lower bracket because Fnatic lost to. FX on Inferno. Oh, that's it. You are you are correct, sir. We didn't see the game, so um, to be fair, you didn't remember it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is what we're complaining about. Because <laughs> yeah. to be fair, all year long we've been waiting to see Fnatic 2009 lineup against Navi 2010, and the hype was huge. They meet them on Nuke, and then we don't even get to see the game. It just happens like in a closed room, and then like everyone has to sign like a sealed affidavit saying that they won't ever reveal what happened in the game. <laughs> and then in like 25 years, Game Goon will like declassify the information and we can find out. Worst part was that Game Goon were basically making a big deal about it as if that was like a good idea too. Yeah, Game Goon were acting straight faggot in that situation. Well, that same person who's been running Game Goon for years now is no longer running it and now we're instead delayed by like 5 hours so... I don't know, now that doesn't seem like a bad, I bad such a bad thing anymore. Are we actually on stream right now? I mean, I'm guessing we are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, sure. I'll check. I mean, to be fair, we're talking about the game, but I just forgot for a second. Nice. We have a, we're rocking the five seven five viewers. Five ninety one, actually. Shit. Well, I mean, to be fair, they're probably joining to watch us get fanatic now. Okay, everyone's on the server. And it looks like this match is going to get underway soon. Okay. It's kind of strange that Exist and DSM don't have anything to do with Norway on their tags. I guess they must actually approve of the bombing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thorin, Semphis, thoughts on this new Fnatic lineup with PETA back on? And SK, how do you think they're going to match up on Inferno? I mean, SK is the favorite. I actually don't think SK is as incredible as Inferno as people make out. Like, I think they have a few holes. And the main thing that I'm interested to see is how good Fnatic's strats are, because obviously there was a time when Fnatic's best map was Inferno, but I also think a lot of that was the fact that they had, like, basically God as, like, a Swedish Counter-Strike player raping everyone with an AK. So, I mean, we'll see with this skill set what they can actually do on T-side, because I don't, I don't think it's going to be that strong. And I really want to see if Delpan's AWP is, like, a deciding factor when they go away. Thoughts? I think it's a pretty solid thing. I think one thing that's interesting is that I think for Fnatic, their T side is going to be... I mean, obviously this matchup might be different, but in general, I would say for Fnatic, their T side is a lot stronger than their CT side. And for SK, I think it's the exact other way around. Yeah, I think um, 
I think in, in order for Fnatic to uh, win this matchup in particular, they're going to have to have a really strong CT. Because uh, I think they need to capitalize on the fact that SK's T side in the past tournaments in Inferno has looked really sloppy. And they haven't got more than six rounds, I don't think, versus uh, any good opponents. I think you can say that in general about SK. Because they have such an insanely high skill average on CT sides, regardless of whether their overall game is on, they can go nuts and run up big rounds. But on a lot of T sides, when they've had to then back it up, they've really let games get like a little too close for comfort. That could have been blowouts. Do you blame that, blame that on Robin and his track calling? Or what do you think is the problem? They, considering they have been well, to be fair, for a while. I'd say it's more like I don't really I don't really know even how to define SK on, on T side. Like every round I can think of that was a key round they won in a big tournament was like one player individually doing something nuts. It was never like, oh what an amazingly executed strategy, like that flashbang was in the perfect spot, this guy backed up that guy perfectly. It's usually like it gets into a sloppy like two V three scenario and then someone kills like two guys or someone like catches the CT on like an off moment just around a corner. But whose fault is that though? Do you, do you not think they would be more successful if they had like an actual actual system that they were working with? Or do you think it's the right call just kind of like almost pugging it and just like relying on their insane individual skill? I don't think SK really even has a choice. Because to be fair, that's kind of like every team has to have a weakness and usually the weakness tempers how good your strength is otherwise the strength would just run over everyone and if SK really had like some elite level strat caller then we, what reason would we then have for them to ever lose a game I think um I think for I think the problem with SK's T sides in my opinion is they don't have enough people that are able to make on the fly decisions and open up rounds for them pretty much the only one that can do that is Forrest the rest are very passive players, which is why I think their CD sides are so strong. We are live on the pistol round. A couple of guys heading towards where Gux is in the apartments. It's actually, everybody on, like, uh, Fnatic has actually pushed out into Banana, and we have Exist spawning down, Karn holding on a nade, and Gux is gonna spot four of SK going into holes, or at least three in just a couple seconds here. Gux loves this angle, he's really good at it. Does the same thing on Allion. And Gux gets gooshed, has the fallback. Peter and he, blinded. And SK is gonna hit, this, hit the site right now. And they are out. An anti -strat. Oh, yeah, what a lineup for gonna Peter get there. Second kill probably shouldn't even have been his, but the guy was literally the perfect height for his cross to drop on it. And we're left with a 1v1. Get right against Exist. Exist. This is the first shot. Get right has 100. Exist 93. I'd expect Get right to win this. He's in a good spot. Well, unless he just does that, of course. That was kind Before of you guys get into anything, I, I would just like to say that I think Robin could have won that round 100% if he just did not charge the existing halls. He had, he, there was no reason for him to do that. He just ran into the opening of the door and got killed and then left to uh, get right in a 1v1. Oh, you mean a uh, library? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. It was also a bit unfortunate that they lined up for Peter so perfectly there. Yeah, but I mean, Robin really could have played that round entirely different. It looked like he just wanted to end the round really quickly instead of playing it safe. But now SK's on a, SK has full bot. They have deagles and armors and some flashes. And I'm sure smokes to work with. So we'll see what they end up doing. Fnatic is actually pushing down Banana with three people right now. Four First has... with 63 health. But he shot Exist down to he 18 health. He damaged two people with his nade. Exist is down to 18 now. And Deagle's get right walking up middle. Get right on Forest have AKs right now. And this has this sounds pretty good on paper. And let's see, it looks like they're going to go up middle. And I wonder if they're going to execute lane, or if they're just going to try to pick DSN on the arch side. And it looks like they're going to head towards DSN, and they're going to get spotted. And that was a perfect timing by SK, and DSN should get killed here. Gets shot down to 30 health, and SK's on the wrap. Exist goes down, so does DSN, and that was a perfect A take. I've always also, thought, actually, Get Right was really proficient at doing that particular wrap around the air. Uh, 
Yeah. What do you call that side? Jungle? Yeah, jungle side. And he's done that 